As SpaceX's latest monster finishes preparations on the launch pad, we await the FAA to give the green light on the license for another historical Starship launch. But what's really interesting is that the FAA is not entirely holding up Ship 25 and Booster 9 on the ground. On top of waiting to obtain the license, SpaceX now faces another hurdle, the FWS. For those unfamiliar with this agency, the FWS stands for the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Officials, or services if you want to count the S. In reality, the U.S. Fish and Wildlife Officials have yet to begin a formal review of SpaceX's upgrades following Starship's April explosion, which could push back the next launch window for Elon Musk's space exploration company by months. The agency still needs to review SpaceX's plans to operate a water deluge system during the next launch of its Starship rocket, a process that could take anywhere from 30 to 135 days, wrote the FWS in an email to the concerned party on Monday. However, that review process has yet to formally begin, which could further delay SpaceX's plans to launch the Starship on its second test flight from South Texas. The U.S. Federal Aviation Administration cannot give SpaceX a new launch license until the consultation with the FWS is complete, the FWS added. The service added so far that it doesn't have the information it needs from the FAA to update its original opinion about how SpaceX's launch facility, called Starbase, will impact endangered species and critical habitats surrounding the site, what's known as a biological assessment. Once the service reviews the FAA's final biological assessment and deems it complete, consultation will be reinitiated and we will have 135 days to issue a final biological assessment. Aubrey Buzik, a Fish and Wildlife Service public affairs specialist, said in an email on Monday. At any time, the FAA and the service can agree to extend that time if for some reason we need to gather further information or new information is presented, Buzik said. The FAA grounded the rocket central to Musk's ambitions to carry humans to the moon and Mars in the wake of the company's first test flight on April 20th. During that flight, Starship successfully took off from its Texas launch pad but suffered multiple engine failures as it ascended into the sky. The two-stage rocket then failed to separate as planned and started spinning out of control, prompting SpaceX to intentionally blow up the vehicle. The launch damaged SpaceX's launch pad and spread debris and pulverized concrete across hundreds of acres of terrain. As part of its efforts to relicense Starship, the FAA requested consultation with the FWS under the Endangered Species Act on the 11th of August, the FWS said. The Starship program's initial environmental assessment that had paved the way for a launch license for the April flight was made of five consultations. Four were delayed from their planned timelines, and the consultation under the Endangered Species Act saw the FAA work with the Department of Interior and the Department of Commerce. The Fish and Wildlife Division comes under the former, and the review under the Endangered Species Act act had taken 10 months to complete after a delay of four months. One of the primary reasons for the request revolved around SpaceX's addition of a water deluge system placed underneath the company's launch pad. After the first test launch of Starship resulted in extensive damage of the launch pad and surrounding area, SpaceX added steel plates underneath the rocket's launch mount that released large quantities of water. The deluge system is meant to dampen and redirect the intense forces created by Starship's engines at takeoff. The FAA said in a statement it had submitted a draft update of the biological assessment to FWS and requested consultation under the Endangered Species Act. Separate from the consultation, from this consultation, the FAA still needs to review a list of corrective actions that SpaceX must make ahead of its next test flight, designed to prevent the large amount of damage that the first test flight caused on the 20th of April. The FAA aims to wrap up this review by the end of October, the agency's acting administrator said on Wednesday. Musk, SpaceX's chief executive officer, congratulated employees completing necessary corrective actions prescribed by the FAA in a September 10th post on his X social media platform. I'm sure that everybody here is wishing all the best for them. In another notable area of our news today, SpaceX has made an unprecedented leap in the world of high-speed internet connectivity. On the 15th of September, 
November, the company proudly unveiled a groundbreaking Starlink gateway station on the remote island of Unalaska, Alaska. This state-of-the-art facility promises to deliver blazing internet speeds of up to 10 gigabits per second, transforming the way residents of this remote island and beyond access the web. Starlink's first community gateway is providing gigabit connectivity up to 10 gigabits per second today, shared the company via X. The launch of this cutting-edge community Starlink Gateway Station marks a significant milestone in SpaceX's mission to provide faster and more reliable internet services to underserved areas. The island of Unalaska, with its rugged terrain and geographical isolation, has long struggled with limited internet connectivity options. Now, thanks to SpaceX's innovative technology, residents and businesses on the island are poised to experience a digital revolution. Ground stations often referred to as Starlink Gateways are the backbone of the Starlink satellite constellation. These stations play a pivotal role in connecting these Starlink satellites in orbit with terrestrial data centers. SpaceX has strategically positioned hundreds of Starlink gateways worldwide to support its ambitious mission of providing global broadband coverage. With a staggering fleet of over 4,700 satellites currently orbiting in low Earth orbit, SpaceX has already made significant strides in delivering high-speed internet to over 1.5 million subscribers worldwide. However, the the recent unveiling of the Unalaska, the recent unveiling of the Unalaska facility and the upcoming deployment of second generation satellites signal a new era in global internet connectivity. As SpaceX continues to expand its Starlink network, the island of Unalaska serves as a beacon of hope for remote communities and regions previously underserved by traditional internet infrastructure. The promise of 10 gigabits per second internet speeds opens up countless possibilities for education, commerce, healthcare, and communication on the island, reaffirming SpaceX's commitment to bridging the digital divide. As this visionary project continues to unfold, it's clear that SpaceX is on a trajectory to revolutionize global internet access and empower communities, no matter how remote, with the gift of high-speed connectivity. The Unalaska Gateway Station stands as a testament to human ingenuity and the relentless pursuit of progress, bringing the world one step closer to a more connected future. And for our last bit of news today, Rocket Lab is gearing up to launch the second of four next-generation radar imaging satellites for Capella Space atop an Electron rocket from New Zealand at 6.30 p.m. As planned, after lifting off from Pad B at Rocket Lab's privately operated launch site on the Mahia Peninsula, the expendable Electron rocket powered by its nine Rutherford first-stage engines will head off on a southeasterly trajectory, targeting a 635-kilometer circular orbit inclined at 53 degrees to the equator. It'll be the 41st orbital mission for the Electron rocket overall and the 9th during 2023. After burning for 2 minutes and 25 seconds, the Electron first stage will separate and a single Rutherford vacuum engine on the second stage will ignite to continue the rocket's climb. After reaching a parking orbit, the second stage will separate a little over 9 minutes into the flight. After coasting for about 44 minutes, the Curie engine of the Electron kick stage will fire for 3 minutes to achieve the intended orbit. Orbit. Separation of the Arcadia 2 satellite will follow approximately 57 minutes and 15 seconds into flight. Rocket Lab launched the first of the four Arcadia series of satellites on a recoverable electron rocket on August 23rd of 2023. Capella Space reported a flawless commissioning for the satellite within a week of it reaching orbit. The company released the first imagery from the satellite's cloud piercing radar on August 31st, showing views of roller coasters at amusement parks in the US and Japan. Arcadia is the third generation of radar imaging satellites operated by Capella Space. Its Synthetic Aperture Radar, or SAR, is capable of imaging the Earth's surface night and day, penetrating clouds, fog, smoke, and rain. The spacecraft is equipped with large solar panels and batteries to feed a more powerful radar system that provides higher bandwidth than the company's earlier Whitney class of satellites. And that's it for today, folks. If you want to support our channel and get access to exclusive content, please consider becoming a patron by clicking the link in the description below. We appreciate your generosity and your passion for space exploration. As as always, this is Kevin from Great SpaceX, and until next time, keep looking up.